Hello, I'm Mustafa Pesukhan, a Optomechanical Engineer. Uh, so today we're going to talk about uh, uh, pre-cured properties of optical adhesives. Pre-cured means what? Means before curing, before the curing process started. So even in that step, when you just want to implement your epoxy without curing, there is some kind of uh, properties that is very important and we need to uh, pay good attention to them. So first I'm going to talk about shelf life of the epoxy. Shelf life means uh, the amount of time that you can keep your epoxy, pot life of your epoxy, and the viscosity of the epoxy. So we're going to talk about each of them uh, one by one. So what is the shelf life of a epoxy? The shelf life of a epoxy is the amount of time that your epoxy can be stored without significant change of its properties. A typical shelf, type, uh, shelf life of two part epoxies uh, is around between six to 12 months. But it depends on the situation that you can keep your uh, adhesive or two part epoxies. For example, for some epoxies, when you bought them, we can see that there is two dates on is written on them. One of them is the minimum expiration date. The other one is the maximum expiration date. So the minimum expiration date, which was, I mean, first time when I saw that, it was a little bit weird for me. So the minimum expiration date, it means that when you keep it at a very bad situation. For bad situation for epoxies, it means room temperature. So when you keep your epoxy at room temperature, sorry for that, I'm just saying epoxy. I'm talking about different, I mean all kinds of adhesives. So when you keep them at room temperature, they're going to go with the minimum expiration date. But when you keep them inside a freezer, refrigerator at colder temperature, you can use the maximum expiration date. So that's very important. So always when you keep your epoxy at room temperature, if there was two dates on them, on them, like minimum expiration date and maximum maximum expiration date, you always should use the minimum expiration date. So we know that putting epoxy in freezer can increase the shelf life of epoxy. So I'm going to talk about uh, the situation that this freezer should have. I mean, it should be industrial freezer. So one part of epoxy is mostly or typically uh, they have much shorter time than you know 6 to 12 months so when you want to keep your epoxy or adhesive optical adhesive inside of the refrigerator moisture is a killer for two parts of epoxy it can decrease the strength of your epoxy significantly so this is something that we should be very careful about that i mean there should be some kind of uh, protection from moisture, you can put it on two, three, four zip locks and then put it inside of the refrigerator. Or it can you can use some kind of industrial uh, refrigerator without moisture. So that's a pretty important uh, properties of the epoxy is that moisture should be at the minimum level. The other thing that we need to be careful about that is crystallization in epoxy, which is a pretty simple thing. It's not a uncommon thing. Most of the time when you keep epoxies inside of the refrigerator, they get crystallized. It means that you can see a lot of crystals inside of your epoxy, which the physical or it's better to say chemical reason of these uh, properties is that your epoxy wants to go to very stable situation, which is being like a solid from liquid state. So that's a very common thing. And one of the best solution for that is to use heater. I mean, just for showing that we're gonna heat, increase the temperature around 50 or 122 Fahrenheit between uh, 10, 20, 30, 40 minutes. It's gonna be okay for eliminating crystals. So you can keep it there at, at each 10 minutes, you can check it. Then you can say, uh, after this amount of time, my epoxy is completely liquid without any crystal. One of a very important topic that I want to talk about this is we always should train our manufacturing engineers and manufacturing technicians that they should inspect epoxy when they receive it. 
I mean, there is no crystal color, everything. And they should store it properly and inspect it again when they want to use it. This is very important. I always told my manufacturing engineers, manufacturing technicians, that you should write down the expiration date on the epoxy. Because, you know, it's really easy that sometimes you're going to mix the expiration date of the epoxy. So minimum expression, maximum expression, all of this information should be written and should be kept as a record. So that's a very important things that we need to be careful about that. Another thing that I want to talk about it is the pot life of the epoxy. So uh, is this is specifically for two part system when you have A and B. So most of them we have different kind of epoxies. Uh, I mean, two-part system, you mix them together. After you mix your adhesive, the amount of time that we can use it without significant change of viscosity, we call it pot life. So the definition for this pot life is to, I mean, some people say when the viscosity increases by 10%, some people say 100%, which is two times after viscosity, there is different definition, but one of the regular one is just 10% increase in viscosity. You can say it depends on the manufacturing. You need to be careful about using the epoxies after you mix them. So we can say it's about 10%. So uh, it has a very wide range between uh, 30 minutes, even 10 minutes to sometimes let me put M. Or MI as a minute, sometimes to five days. So this is a very important thing that we need to uh, be aware of that. So pot life is the time that when you mix it, put it inside of the syringe, when you want to inject your repulses. So this is something that we need to be uh, very careful about for designing our manufacturing process. So now I'm going to talk about viscosity, viscosity of the epoxy. So viscosity is defined as a resistance to flow, which is a very important property of the epoxy. It's mostly related to ease of handling uh, or injecting or putting it inside of the syringe. Generally, you can say high viscosity adhesive, you can easily control the bit size and you can easily control the position. Handling is easier. That's the kind of advantages of using high viscosity adhesive. And one of the main advantages of low viscosity adhesive is that most of the time you have improved wetting. So in another video, I'm going to talk about what is the wetting, I mean wetting of the epoxy, which is another chemical uh, properties of the epoxy. So, this is very important. I read it in one article from, I think, John Daly, that uh, sometimes you have good viscosity at room temperature for some epoxies, but when you start your cure process at high temperature, your epoxy is going to start flowing, or, I mean, the viscosity gets lower, and it's going to be like flowing. So that's something that we need to be careful about it, especially when our optics in vertical position. The, uh, the unit for measuring viscosity is centipoise, which I cannot pronounce it very well, but 1 CP is equal to 10 to the minus 3 pascal times second, or we can say 1 millipascal second. So there is a definition for measuring that. It's related to shear force, modulus of viscosity. But the easiest way to memorize it for me is like this. So water at room temperature uh, has one CP viscosity. So I can I have a good feeling of water. So honey is 5,000. So honey is very viscous. I mean, the viscosity is high. So I can feel that when they said the viscosity of this uh, adhesive is 500, so I can say it's pretty close to water, so it should be very liquidy. It's not like honey. When they said, you know, the viscosity of this epoxy 
is uh, 400k I can say okay if I can easily handle that it's like honey and for uh, mayonnaise is 20k so which is four times higher than uh, honey so we can get a good feeling about that that's all about that was uh, all video was about the chemical properties of the epoxy we're going to continue this kind of videos about different aspects of the epoxy thank you very much